Alrighty, so we're going to continue with cells today, and we're going to look at cellular organelles. Just as a reminder, all cells have to contain these three components. Remember that the plasma membrane can also be called the plasma lemma or the cell membrane. Typically, you'll see me call it the cell membrane. Also as a reminder, remember that prokaryotic cells have no nuclear membrane. Instead, they have a, a region called the nucleoid. They have no membrane-bound organelles. They do have ribosomes, but ribosomes are not encased in a membrane. And they are found in the kingdoms of Archaebacteria and Eubacteria, and they are smaller in size than eukaryotic cells. As a reminder, eukaryotic cells have definite membrane-bound nuclei, as well as membrane-bound organelles, and they are larger in size than the prokaryotic organelles. Here is a general over overview of the cell of a typical animal cell. And these are things that I do expect you to be responsible for. So make sure that you have studied this image or images that are similar. I hope that you have started with a blank diagram of the cell for this lecture. If not, I would highly recommend you pause this lecture, go print one out and have it ready so that you can go through as you go along and make notes. So starting from the outside in, the cell membrane is made mostly of a double layer or bilayer of phospholipids with scattered proteins throughout it. The cell membrane allows the cell to be selective in what types of molecules can pass through it. Cell size is controlled by metabolic requirements and the needs for, for DNA. If the cell is too small, it won't have enough DNA, and if it's too big, it will prevent communication from the DNA to the rest of the cell. There's also a problem of surface area to volume ratio. As the side length increases, the volume goes in three dimensions. So every time you square the area, you cube the volume. So the volume can get ridiculously big with just small increases in size. The reason that's a problem is because you can often lose problems with getting rid of waste products, getting in new products for the cell's metabolism. There's a whole lot of issues caused with the cell being so big. The biggest cell on the planet is the egg cell. And the egg cells for humans are about the size of a period at the end of a sentence in 10 point font. So you can actually see that one cell with the naked eye. Uh, the largest cell that I know of that's currently on this planet is an ostrich egg, because that is one cell. Or it starts out as that anyway. So again, here's a generalized eukaryotic animal cell. The membrane-bound organelles help to break up the space requirements inside the cell, so it's reducing the surface area to volume ratio problem while also producing more efficient mechanisms by isolating the functions of one organelle from it interfering with the functions of another organelle. The distinguished animal cell features are the absence of cell walls and the presence of centrioles. Centrioles in this picture are the two little watermelon colored uh, cylinders up by the nucleus and you will always find the centrioles by the nucleus except during cell division and they're not called centrioles. Plant cells have three organelles that animal cells do not. They have chloroplasts, which are these green things with the little green stacks in them. They have the central vacuole, which holds water, and they have the cell wall. Plant cells do not have centrioles. So let's start in the middle now. The nucleus contains the genes of a cell. Genes are located along chromosomes, which are rod-shaped structures containing DNA and protein. The nucleus controls the cell's functions, and it makes mRNA. Chromatin is the relatively unwound form of the rod-shaped chromosomes that appear as X's under the microscope, but only during mitosis. The nucleolus produces pieces of the ribosomes. That's its whole job. The endoplasmic reticulum functions as the highway for the cell. It comes in two flavors, smooth and rough. Both are used for transport of materials through the cell. 
the rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes on it, and so it produces antibodies, proteins, and membrane components. But the only reason it produces the proteins is because of the ribosomes. They're the ones that do it, not the rough ER by itself. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or smooth ER, produces lipids, metabolizes carbohydrates, de detoxifies poisons and drugs, and regulates muscle function. The Golgi bodies look like flattened stacks of pancakes. They store, sort, and ship materials in vesicles, so they're kind of like the UPS of the cell. The mitochondria convert food mole molecules into ATP for cell use. The outer membrane is smooth and the inner membrane is folded, and those folds are called Christi, to allow for more ATP production. The inner portion is called the matrix. So for the mitochondria, that's equivalent to the power plant. The chloroplasts have a double membrane structure like the mitochondria. The coin-like structures in there are called the thylakoids, and stacks of thylakoids are called grana. This is the organelle in which carbohydrates are produced in photosynthesis in plants. So this would be like the solar greenhouse or the solar array for producing energy. Cells also have their own skeleton. The cytoskeleton is made up of proteins. They help to shape, support, and move organelles around a cell. They also form the centrioles in animal cells only, and they form flagella and cilia as well. They are named by their size. So the microtubules are the biggest, the microfilaments are the smallest, and the intermediate is, guess what, in the middle. Plant cell walls are made of cellulose. They form rigid structures that help plants maintain their cell shape. No, you don't need to know this diagram. Don't worry about it, just know what the cell wall does. And finally for plants, they have a cuticle. The cuticle is made up of a lipid that prevents water loss. What's it called? Wax. And you can see that based on different kinds of plants. Some plants are waxier than others. Um, so the ones that look almost plastic have a huge cuticle layer. Okay, so those are the basics of the cell organelles. Make sure that you have gone through the key vocabulary and make sure that you know the functions of all of the organelles that are found on your study guide for this material. Have a great day!